Here at Pet Talk People, you know we love all our animals, and we do tend to talk a lot about dogs, but cats tend to go under the radar, except for a very new report that's just been published in the Veterinary Practitioner, which means it's been peer-reviewed and all sorts of good things like that, so you know it's true, and it's got some very scary information in it, and that is that some pet foods in the supermarket are not good for our cats. Now, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the lovely Dr. Anne Fawcett from Sydney Animal Hospitals. Hi, Anne. Hello, Kay. How are you? Ah, oh, look, I'm, I'm really well, but I'm shocked and horrified and appalled that in this day and age that cats uh, and other pets can be affected by pet foods. We're giving them in, in all belief that we're doing the right thing. What is, I guess, the gist of the story? So the main issue in this story is that we have detected some very high levels of sulfur dioxide preservatives in fresh pet meat. That is the kind of stuff that you get from the refrigerated meat section Mm -hmm. of the supermarket designed especially for pets. And this is a type of preservative that is, um, it basically leaches the vitamin B from the animal system. So they end up with vitamin B deficiency. It doesn't sound too bad, but Basically, what that means is long-term it causes brain damage in cats. Ew. So this could be happening without us really knowing about it. So what brought it to your attention and prompted you to write this uh, amazing article? And I must say, I'm I'm really excited about this because it means we might be able to make a difference. Now, thank you. It, it actually has been reported before, strangely enough, a couple of decades ago in Australia, but since then not much has been done. And we had a cat presented to us, a, a beautiful um, senior cat who was having seizures and mm. we couldn't work out why. We tested the vitamin B levels. They were very low. We supplemented with vitamin B and the cat suddenly changed. It became brighter. Wow. More focused. It was a really dramatic transformation, and it became apparent that this cat had been suffering from vitamin B deficiency for some time. I think one of the problems is these things tend to go unnoticed because, unlike people, we don't expect cats to be able to answer particularly intelligent questions or know what day of the week it is. Or some people might disagree, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> they might, but you can imagine that um, some degree of brain damage could conceivably go unnoticed by oh, pet owners. Definitely, definitely. So how did you manage to work out what it was that was causing the problem? Now, one of the things that I did was actually took the food to a laboratory and had it tested. I had several brands tested to compare the results, and it was clear there were really high levels of sulfur dioxide preservatives. Um, to, to give you an idea, um, some of the foods had about... 875 milligrams per kilogram, which is sky high. Some of the foods had 35 milligrams per kilogram. Okay, so this is something that used to be in human foods too, but it's not anymore, Um, but it's still in in our our pet foods. I mean, can we actually say where the the food was that this cat was eating? Because the cat wasn't apparently eating anything else, was it? It was just eating this one food from the one supermarket. That's correct. So the owner was thinking they were doing the right thing by their cat. They were getting a food that the cat really enjoyed eating. And a lot of these foods are based on kangaroo meat, which cats get extremely yeah. addicted to. This particular cat wouldn't eat anything else, would only eat this particular brand of food morning and night. So um, it, it was being purchased from a mainstream supermarket by someone who had great intentions and managed to cause a really serious illness. The unfortunate thing is, although this has been reported before, it's not illegal to put this substance in cat food, which is kind of shocking because you can't put it in human food. It's wrong because uh, humans would have exactly the same problem. And if you think about it, uh, and, and I have since reading your report, there must be a lot more cats that are getting this problem and they're getting a bit sort of wobbly in the legs, they can't walk and they're not eating and they just think, oh, it's old age, you know, poor thing, time to go for fluffy. But it's actually sulfur dioxide in fresh kangaroo meat. So what can we do about it? I mean, you know, what can we do? I think the first thing is to contact the suppliers of this food. The major supermarket chains, this is a really great opportunity for them to take a leadership role in this regard because if they don't purchase this and put it, you know, on sell it to consumers, then obviously the companies who manufacture the food will have to change their practices. I think that's a really, really good start. We can try with legislation, but that's notoriously slow and despite early reports, nothing's changed. So I I think we need to try a different tack. And I guess I see the real change coming from the major supermarket chains. 
I mean, let's call a spade a spade. It's Woolworths. Woolworths select kangaroo meat. I mean, perhaps they don't know. Well, now you know Woolworths. What are you going to do about it? Um, I've got to put the challenge out there because I don't want to hear about this happening. It was a lucky escape that you're able to turn things around. I mean, this must be comparatively common. Um, yeah, well, I, I guess the point that you made before, we think that probably it's more common than is reported. There's certainly a lot of owners who would dismiss these kind of signs as signs of ageing, perhaps dementia, or signs of other disease in their cats. And certainly it's something that we'd need to look into further to get a really accurate picture of. But my concern is there's a lot of subclinical disease around, a lot of subclinical vitamin B deficiency. Okay, now that's in vet speak. When you're saying subclinical, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I guess by subclinical, I mean something that doesn't quite cause obvious clinical signs. So uh, maybe an obvious clinical sign to an owner might be seizures. They're very dramatic. Mm -hmm. They're impossible to ignore. But if your cat's feeling a little bit dopey or lightheaded or fuzzy or unfocused, that's not something that anyone but the most astute cat person is going to notice. Mm. So the trick is to get to your vet sooner rather than later. It's not one of these things that you wait and see if it gets better. Um, I think that's one step, but the other step is to make sure that you are feeding a complete diet. And if your cat happens to be addicted to kangaroo meat, consider feeding human-grade kangaroo meat because that doesn't have sulfur dioxide preservatives in it. We know that. So you can still feed that meat that your cat likes the taste of. One of the things about these preservatives is they're designed to mask the signs of putrefaction, but they don't stop the meat from going putrid. They just Ooh. mask the signs. So... By, I guess, switching to a human-grade product, you probably have to go and buy a new supply a little more frequently. It's potentially a little less convenient, but that's so much more important to do for our cats. Mm. And well, for all our pets, I'm a big fan of um, natural nutrition and providing that, you know, even a, a, a super-duper-duper duper premium pet food can always be improved with just a little bit of extra fresh um, fruit and vegetables and things like that as well. Now, how can people tell if it's got sulfur dioxide? There's sort of numbers, 200s and something do you know those? Yeah, yes. Um, I have to go off my list because it's not <laughs> on the top of my head. Um, there, there absolutely are different numbers that are used, but it doesn't come across with a big warning label saying ah. this contains sulfur dioxide preservatives. So some of the things that you'll see, you'll see sulfite type preservatives. Um, they might be under the numbers 220, mm -hmm. 221, 222, 223, 224, 225 and 228. Um, they're all sulfite type preservatives that can have detrimental effects to cats. And dogs and people. Indeed, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> um, people don't eat this type of food. And interestingly enough, these kinds of meats, at least in my experience, seem much more popular with cats than dogs. Mm. But certainly there are cases reported in dogs as well. Um, one thing, one difference I think is that cats seem to stick more closely to a routine diet. They seem to be um, much more creatures of habit where it comes to eating, whereas dogs are true omnivores. They do seem to have a bit more variety in their diet, so they're potentially going to be less vulnerable than cats. Okay, but cats can benefit from variety as well as dogs? I think so. I think that one needs to be careful when you're experimenting with your pet's diet. The, the more is not necessarily the merrier. I think that it's good to provide some variety but introduce things slowly and in small amounts just so you don't upset your, your cat's tummy, um, don't want to cause vomiting or diarrhea or create a food aversion. Um, and, and don't despair if your cat turns, your nose, turns its nose up the first time. You know, Try again. One little trick is to warm the food. Sometimes that makes it a little bit more palatable. Um, but, but definitely changing the diet dramatically is, is not a good idea. But lots of different ones. Your cats love lots of different things, yeah? They do. Um, they do. At the moment, they're going through a, a bit of a fancy feast fad. Um, <laughs> which is interesting, uh, but they're really into trying different things. Uh, sometimes they'll even snaffle a bit of dog food, but I try to avoid that. <laughs> Dr. Ann Fawcett, I thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. And I really do, again, repeat that challenge. You know, you've done the hard yards, you saved that cat's life, and hopefully we can uh, get some changes happening with the supermarket chains with the sulfur dioxide. 
Thank you so much, Katie. This has been a really important issue, so I really appreciate you taking it on board. Thanks. Ah, we won't leave it just here. We'll come back to you and see how we go. We'll do a follow-up. See you again soon. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.